Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back. This is the third lecture for Chapter 6. And in this lecture, I'm going to do one of my favorite examples that I believe gives a tremendous amount of insight into the nature of the stable and unstable manifolds of a hyperbolic equilibrium point. So here's the example. It's two-dimensional, autonomous, and it has clearly has a fixed point, equilibrium point, at the origin. And this is in a nice form because the, it has a linear part. x dot equals x, y dot equals minus y, and the nonlinear term is just x squared. So you'd think this would be fairly simple. Let's look at it a little more closely. If the linear part is, the linearization about the origin is just given by this linear part because it's the, the uh, vector field is in the form of a Taylor expansion about the origin already. And the linear part is already diagonalized. So notice that if we set x equals 0, that x dot equals 0. So when x is 0, it doesn't change from, from x equals 0. So the y-axis, which is x equals 0, is an invariant manifold. In fact, it's the global stable manifold of the problem. Setting x equal to 0, we have y dot equals minus y. So any point on the y-axis, starting on the y-axis, decays to 0, approaches 0, at an exponential rate. OK. And so the linear part, we saw it's the, the, the Jacobian. And we see immediately that the x-axis, the horizontal axis, is the unstable subspace, and the y-axis is the stable subspace, but it's also the global stable manifold of the origin. They happen to be the same in this case, the stable subspace and the stable manifold. All right, so we want to find the unstable manifold of the origin. One way to do that I'm going to show you two ways, is to divide y dot and x dot. In this way, using the chain rule, that gives us dy dx equals minus y over x plus x. This is a linear, non-autonomous equation. Now you can see where it's useful to be able to keep straight in your mind the independent and dependent variables. The independent variable is x in this case. It's linear because it's linear in the dependent variable. OK, so we can solve this. You can go back and look at the techniques in Appendix B if you've forgotten how to solve such equations. But the point I want to make is that this is the solution of this equation that passes through the origin. And you can almost verify that it's a solution in your head just by differentiating this and plug it into the left and right hand side. Okay, it's also, it passes through the origin. Remember the three cases, uh, requirements for the unstable manifold. It's also tangent to the unstable subspace at the origin, the x axis. dy dx is zero at x equals zero. It's the only trajectory that passes the origin. That's not immediately obvious. And it's unique as the unstable manifold. So this is the global unstable manifold of the origin. Now, this is not entirely satisfactory, but how do you know it's invariant? Well, you check that the vector field is tangent to this curve. Remember, Manifold is a curve in two dimensions. This is what we're looking at. But we can get a little bit of insight by solving, more insight, into solving for the trajectories. Now, go back to the equation.
So we can solve for x as a function of t and y as a function of t. We can solve easily. We can solve um, the first one. x of t is x naught e to the t. Plug that into this expression that we would get x naught squared e to the 2t. And we would have y dot equals minus y plus some function of t. We can also solve that analytically. And these are the trajectories that you get. So these are the trajectories that at time 0 give you x naught and y naught. Now, what is the stable manifold? That's a set of initial conditions corresponding to trajectories that approach 0, the equilibrium point, at an exponential rate. OK. So look at, I've arranged the terms of initial conditions so that they're multiplying these time-dependent terms, which are all exponentials in this case. So the terms e to the 2t and e to the t, they, as t goes to infinity, they blow up. They, they go to infinity. So the only way an initial condition could decay to 0 at an exponential rate would be for x naught the coefficient on those terms, to be 0. What about this? Well, it doesn't matter what this is, because e to the minus t does go to 0 as t goes to infinity. So x naught equals 0, and y naught anything are initial conditions that make up the stable manifold. And we knew that already. But now we're getting it from the trajectories directly. OK, unstable manifold. These are the set of initial conditions that as time goes to minus infinity, approach the origin at an exponential rate. Well, as time goes to minus infinity, these terms automatically go to 0. So we don't need to worry about them if we're just concerned with time going to minus infinity. But as time goes to minus infinity, this term blows up. It becomes unbounded. So as time, the, the, the constraint on the initial conditions so that the trajectory goes to 0 as time goes to minus infinity means that this coefficient on e to the minus t term must be 0. Well, that tells that that coefficient being 0 means y naught equals x naught squared over 3, which is what we just previously derived. This is the global unstable manifold of the origin. Any trajectory that satisfies this constraint will go to 0 as time goes to minus infinity at an exponential rate. So, Invariant sets are made up of, of trajectories. In, invariant manifolds, invariant curves are examples of sets that are made up of trajectories. So we look, we characterize them by the nature of the initial conditions for all the trajectories. And this is what we get. So this is two ways of seeing the nature of the stable and unstable manifold of the origin for this example. Now, I really like examples like this because once you understand it deeply, you can tweak it a bit to uh, get more insight out of it. For example, you could put parameters in it. You could add extra time dependence and talk about stable and unstable manifolds of time dependent solutions. What happens if the equilibrium point can move around and be a saddle point? Could you embed this in a higher dimensional Hamiltonian system? All sorts of fun things you can do when you have a, a basic building block example. You can build further from it. And we'll see that. And I, I, I go a bit further with this in the exercise. So that's enough for the, on this example for the moment. In the next lecture, we'll look at another example. So until next time, bye.